Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Okay, welcome. As you know by now, even though Sobcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and <sighs> crying at work. That's what we're talking about today. And I'm joined by the beautiful Stephanie Kent. She is my creative producer, life partner, fabulous human, and I'm wearing red lipstick in her honor because she told me on the last episode she joined me on that that was a secret. That was the secret, right? Yeah. uh, If you read the book, The Secret, that's all you learn. It's just like, (laughs) it's essentially a guide to figuring out the shade of red lipstick that works for your skin tone. Oh my gosh. Wait, that would be really helpful. Actually. I've always like, every time they describe that in magazines, I have no freaking idea what they're talking about. I don't know what my skin tone is. I it's translucent. They don't write that. <laughs> I don't put that in books. Five lipstick shades that will work for your skin. If you're translucent. <laughs> yeah. They're basically like, are you at super crazy high risk of skin cancer? Here's the red lipstick for you. <laughs> Um, some of them have like SPF that. in it. No, that would be, yeah. actually, yeah. does that exist? Or like this one, uh, pairs really nicely with a sun hat. <laughs> Wait, there should be like an article about red lipsticks for when you have sunburn. Okay. Really Whatever. excited to read that article. Whoever wants to write it. <laughs> you should pitch it. Wait, what did you say? You should pitch it. I think my brain totally like blocked out the word pitch because it terrifies me still to this day. <laughs> More than fair. More than fair. It's not good. Um, so I have a quote. I have a quote that I thought could start off our conversation, our very serious conversation because we're very serious people. <clears throat> I found it while I was like, I basically just Googled like crying at work because I wanted to see what the internet had to say about it. And I found this quote and it's, Dr. Sandy Mann. And she says, the effort it takes to fake or hide emotions can be compared to physical labor. It causes huge mental stress. It can make you lose your sense of identity as if your employer owns your emotions. And that's the episode. We should all quit our jobs so we don't lose our sense of self. That's my takeaway. Okay. (laughs) Stephanie's advice of the day. Just quit your job. (laughs) Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll circle back to that point. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back to how to quit your job without bursting into tears, which I haven't figured out yet. Um, I thought we could start with our personal experiences and then work outward because I did find some really interesting information studies surveys you know about I just keep hitting my hand on this microphone I'm so sorry your hand has things to say baby let it let it be let it go I just gotta toggle my hands just hands anyway I found a bunch of surveys and like studies about what people think about crying at work so we'll get there um have you ever cried at work oh absolutely (laughs) absolutely and I'm sure there are people who like associate me with crying at work because they just walked in on you no I probably just do it a lot (laughs) or I used to (laughs) there was always something to be stressed out about to the point of tears like I'm not a big crier in general Mm -hmm. but I guess like these tears are valuable so they better be like financially compensated so I got to do it at work like in the office so you're paid to cry yeah that's like I honestly think that I've I have cried more at work than I have in like maybe the apartment that I currently live in that is so interesting so you don't 
feel like you want to like be alone when you cry? No, I do, but I just feel like it all comes to a head while I'm in the office. <laughs> and I just like have to run to the bathroom and like pretend like uh, I'm having an allergic reaction. <laughs> I've done that so many times when my eyes have been red. I'm like, yeah. oh, the pollen is like really bad. And you know what? Yeah. People are always yeah. like, I feel that like my nose is so itchy. Like <laughs> we're all playing along. Rooms, like I've Wait, tell me about that. That's a good hack. Yeah, well, I try not to do it because uh, especially at the last two places that I've worked, there have been so few places to like take meetings. Um, But one time someone called me um, and they were really mean to me, but it was like a last minute thing. And so I was like, okay, well, I I had to book a conference room to talk to this person um, because I didn't really have any other options. And then they were mean to me to the point of me crying. And I was like, oh, we could use this in the future. That is so smart. If it's like 15 after and nobody was using the conference room anyway, you got 15 minutes to cry. Oh my gosh. That is such a good idea. The only thing is the people who like burst in and are like, we get the conference room next. And you're just like, a <laughs> timer. <laughs> So it's like two minutes before the half hour or like whatever. And then you like clean yourself up and then you exit. Oh my gosh. That is so smart. Do you, when you have Mm -hmm. cried at work, has it been a situation where you felt like you had a certain amount of time? Like, okay, I have a 10 minute break. I'm going to use it to cry. Or is it pretty spontaneous? It's usually pretty spontaneous. I can't plan it. Like I try not to cry at all costs, just like in my personal life. Yeah. So well, they're very could, valuable tears. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're, they're really valuable tears worthwhile. They're company time tears. So if I could plan it, I would, I would love to just plan like, you know, how on like 30 rock where Jack Donaghy, like just farts for like an hour at the top of the mountaintop. <laughs> That's what I want with crying. <laughs> You would just get it done in, in one hour, the whole year's worth of crying. Yeah. That is actually, that would be such a time saver. Because then you so could just cool. not wear mascara that day. You could just be like, where? Like I was wearing mascara to work anyway. <laughs> they don't pay me to do makeup on their time. So why am I going to wear makeup? I love these um, boundaries. <laughs> It's just, um, I sleep in too much to do my makeup for work, usually, or I did when we had an office. Taurus life, though. Um, Yeah, I was thinking about times I've cried at work, and a lot of the jobs I had, um, like, for the first half of my life or whatever, they, I was either in a cubicle or... I like was running around doing a lot of different tasks. So like no one could see me all the time. And then I feel like, I don't know when it happened, but all of a sudden like the shared workspace became cool and popular. And then everywhere I've been since then, it's like, I'm always facing someone. Yeah. Oh my God. You're like sitting on everyone's laps. (laughs) It's terrible. Yeah. They did not factor in crying to that system. I know. Or like, because like, I wish I could say, yeah, like in those open spaces, like I just let it go. Like I just let it cry. Like I'm not ashamed, but I am as much as I support crying and I'm all about like letting out your emotions yeah. and expressing yourself. I'm like crying is cool, but definitely like stuff. I don't know, stigmas and stuff, like, just... Yeah, it's, it's also a really private thing. Mm-hmm, sometimes like, it's private. Those are big emotions that, yeah. and, you know, you have to explain yourself, and that takes away from your time from crying, because you're talking to somebody about it. And <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. True. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely cried in cubicles, and then we got rid of cubicles, and I'm just like, I've been shit out of luck ever since. Yeah. Bring back cubicles, if not for the crying. Give everybody their own office. I don't want to talk to anybody ever again. 
Yeah. How do you feel that working from home has like improved the crying situation? Man, as much as I don't like crying at my own home, (laughs) it's been really nice to like factor that in and be like, oh, I got to move this meeting because I need to cry for 45 minutes. So I'm just going to bump that one back or you guys camera off. Um, There's, there's, there's construction yes in my tear ducts the camera off the construction in my tear ducts oh my god you are full of it full of tears usually yeah <laughs> and I don't want to be I don't like it better out than in but yeah the camera off thing has like been life-changing because for some reason it has a totally different vibe than just being on a phone call right it feels more present. It feels like you made more of an effort if you're on a Zoom call or Google, whatever, whatever, and you just have your camera off. So interesting. Like, why? I don't know, man. What, what is your, so when you are like crying in a work setting, yeah. do you go, do you run to the bathroom? Like, where do you go? Where do you well, feel safe? In the old days, in ye old days before working on the internet, um, I usually would go to my car and be like, I have 10 minutes before, like basically a glorified bathroom uh, break. And, uh, or I would just, a couple of times I would just cry in the cubicle because I was facing the wall. Like anyone who walked by just saw the back of my head. And I literally was only caught one time. And my boss was just like, hey, are you okay? And I just said, yeah. (laughs) And then she left me alone. You know, it just, it was like, fine. You did, you, you didn't have a door, but you did have privacy. And um, yeah. then in open spaces, I would either go to the bathroom, but then I started running into other people in the bathroom were also crying in the bathroom. And that was like <laughs> kind of more upsetting. So then sometimes I'd like go for a walk with like a really specific goal in mind. Like I will get coffee and I have between the time I am in the office to getting the coffee to just like let all my emotions out. Oh, that's really smart. And then once I drink the coffee, that will cure me. Yeah, Yeah. that's smart. Yeah. And now though, like now that everything's here inside the internet officially, um, I mostly like the other day, (laughs) actually, Earlier this week, I recorded another episode, um, and right before, we were just talking about what we were going to talk about, and for some reason, it just hit a nerve, and I cried right there, and it was fine. It was fine. Like It actually was a little affirming, because I was like, this person still respects me. Um, I showed that I... (laughs) have feelings and they're big sometimes and yeah like I had a little bit of a lump in my throat for the rest of the recording but it just was fine it was fine so maybe that is good for my identity or whatever but what about you like it where do you hide like in the office or yeah when you're in the office besides the I mean you said you go to the bathroom a lot yeah, I usually like go to the bathroom or like go for a walk, kind of like mm-hmm. what you were saying. But like, I didn't start driving to work until like my current job. Oh yeah. So I didn't like have the car until like a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. So that was always so it was usually like I had to choose like a bathroom or something like that. Um, but I've worked in places where it's like just like a business park so you don't really have anywhere to walk or go to yeah well like yeah. you're gonna you know you're gonna probably run into a coworker yeah. if you decide to do that um or it's just like it's not gonna be like a cathartic experience to you know walk to this other big corporation and start <laughs> crying um so it's usually yeah it's usually the bathroom I've definitely like I worked one place in my early 20s where there's only one other woman who worked there. So the bathrooms were, you know, male 
yeah how they're they're usually done and so like I didn't even like go to a stall because I was like I don't care the other woman sees me cry (laughs) yes I I love that that's a freedom yeah it was really nice and so like there'd be a couple times where she'd be like you want to get coffee oh yeah it's like she's great she's great but sometimes you know it's like yeah he is a 22 year old man can't change (laughs) Yeah. just work with what you got yeah like get another 22 year old man it's gonna be the same no you don't have to get into too many specifics because this is a lifestyle we're talking about but what kind of emotions or situations cause you to cry at work specifically at work specifically I feel like relationship shit always goes down during work hours and I don't know why Oh my God, that's so real. It's like the most inappropriate time, but yeah. yeah. Always, always during work hours where it's like somebody shoots you a text and they're like, I just don't think this is going to work. Oh. Or like, we should talk later. And it's like, you could have waited until like 6.01 p.m. That's so unfair. That's like, really unfair. On. I don't well, like really, that. It's not nice. It's really not nice. And it's, that would be like the equivalent of breaking up with someone like during a math test hey hey, i'm breaking up with you (laughs) i'm fucking taking a math test do you know about decimals can we talk about that like come on this sucks (laughs) i hate that oh my god oh my god yeah that happened a lot in my 20s it was just like Mm are these years not difficult enough (laughs) um and also just like the general pressures of a job where like uh, being overextended is something that often makes me cry sure. or like want to cry um, because I uh, want to do a good job and like I want I want to be able to handle everything that, that's been handed to me and I'm expected to be able to take on and sometimes it's just not possible or doesn't feel possible in the moment. So that's something that it's like will make me cry at work or like I take feedback really personally and I've gotten, you know, enough feedback that I'm just like, hmm, maybe I suck. Maybe I'm not a good employee after all. Which means I'm not a good person. (laughs) It's all tied to identity, especially like, I feel like most women in our age range and that kind of thing. These are things that have been instilled in us and it's, it's a hard habit to break to think of yourself that way. But I, I definitely do. Wait, uh, you can break that habit? Where did you hear this? Well, I said it was hard to break it. <laughs> but I didn't say anyone has. Okay. Well, if you hear of anyone doing that, can you like hook me up, please? <laughs> we'll, have them, we'll have them as a guest on the podcast. Oh my God, yeah. If, if you have figured out out how to not tie your identity to your work please email us yeah hello at christinawolfgram.com immediately <laughs> please get zero emails I do. actually no one ever emails you again because they're like <laughs> you might think that i figured it out but i didn't you know what's like sick about work is I like resent how many emails I get, but I also, if I got zero emails, I'd be like, I'm a fan. I hate myself. So there's, there's no, no way. way. No. None. If taking care of your mental health has been a challenge over the past year and a half, you're not alone. Literally, you're not. We get you. Coming this fall, the Dive Through app will be featuring free interactive courses created with mental health professionals, including a course titled Navigating Life in a Pandemic, which I will definitely be checking out. You'll learn to identify the different types of stress you might be experiencing, the various ways collective grief might show up, and the best ways to work through it all. Download the Dive Through app for free in the App Store and Google Play. Mm-mm. Yeah. Have well, you heard... Sorry, I, totally interrupted you. I interrupted you. <laughs> oh. Stop interrupting ourselves. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to know like what what kind of what are the themes that have mm. like made you cry at work? 
Oh yeah. Definitely not feeling like I can keep up. Um, and part of me wishes that I had cried in front of people actually and not hidden it because there's like a chance that somebody who like knew more than me could have been like, Hey, like that pressure is coming from you. Yeah. I don't know. And then, um, I've cried because I feel misunderstood and I, as I've gotten older, I have figured out that my communication is not very good. I, I actually, for, for being such an emotional person, I'm not that great at processing emotions in the moment. It takes me like days or weeks or even sometimes months. So in the moment I'll feel really misunderstood. And then like two years later, I'm like, Oh, because I didn't explain that I needed praise. Yeah. Oh man. Of course they weren't like telling me I was doing a good job. I like didn't ask for anything like that. And they were really busy. And like, why would I like, why would they think of that? Yeah. So that's really, that's a big thing. Um, First of all, I want to say, I think you're being hard on yourself. You're not a bad communicator. So okay. I don't want you to think that of yourself because you're not, you're a great communicator. Okay. Um, I think with being, you know, somebody who's so in touch with their emotions, that is oftentimes just internal and you're not expected to be able to vocalize it necessarily. And, you know, that doesn't make you a bad communicator. It's just like, we're all processing our own shit and not just because you can't do it in the moment doesn't mean that you're bad at it. It's just, it's going to take time and you're on your own timetable there. It, it's, if it doesn't happen in the moment, you can always do it later and that's okay. And that's the end of the episode, everybody. We have reached peak amazing. <laughs> that's so kind. It's and true I'm, though. I know. And I'm gonna, I am fighting the thing of being like, no, you're just being nice. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take the next year to process that. Let's take your time. Okay. Thank you. That's really nice. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I you off. No, I don't even. Oh yeah. I was thinking about this one job that I had. Um, one summer I worked in like the administration back office area of an emergency room and it was such a strange job because people would come into the ER and then they get a chart and everyone gets like the same, like fill it, uh, what do you call them? Like, I don't know, registration forms basically. And then some of them would have like a bigger file and some of them, you know, it'd be their new file. And my job was to scan everything because it was all still on paper. So I would get there at like six in the morning and then I had to go to like different locations and pick up all the files and then go into a cubicle and scan them for hours and hours and hours. And also side note, there was also only one other person working there with me and it was an older man and he ate cold spaghetti for breakfast frequently. And I just needed to share that. That's I res- to make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I respect it. I just don't want to be anywhere near it. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, some of those, uh, like files of course I couldn't help myself I just like wanted to like look through everything and I would cry for people because I didn't know what would happen to them like I it was just their intake forms it never said like and then you know like sometimes people come in and it'd be like heavy bleeding and all this stuff and I'd be like well what happened and I would never know. Worse. It was so sad, but I'm like, I'm resolution. Well, I'm proud of my baby self because I like just remembered this, but I would write down their names on sticky notes. And then later I would write the end of their story for them. <laughs> that is so sweet. So cute. 
baby me good job I don't think I could be that creative right now <laughs> like that's a lot of work but well, I don't know at this point you probably Thank didn't have to pay rent back then I definitely did not have to pay rent back then <laughs> so true <laughs> Yeah, I, I would cut yourself some stuff. <laughs> also, my back didn't hurt. That's new for me. I don't want, I don't want it. Get it off me. It's not worth it. <laughs> Just remove it. I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it. Throwing it away. Yeah. Um, can I tell you about a survey? Yeah, yeah. you're into surveys? Okay. Yeah. This is from the Times of New York. Ever heard of it? Um a survey of 3,200 workers and executives found that 52% had lost their temper at work. So that's like more than half of the people thought it was acceptable to show anger in the office. But 70% of the group had negative views about crying at work. Yeah. I found that so interesting because actually like I, I'm more disturbed by people losing their temper. I'd so yeah, much rather yeah. someone cry at me. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I this agree. is, I don't know. I'm more likely to listen to someone, honestly, if they're crying rather than, than being angry. I mean, no, being angry is okay, but losing their temper to me is in a more inappropriate, yeah. but yeah. no, totally. Yeah. I, so I, no, tell me. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, as someone who's done <laughs> room for anger in the workplace, like feeling angry is valid, but taking it out on another person, we're all just trying to get through the day. We're all just trying to do our jobs. Yeah. You know, so like being somebody who can, you know, take that frustration out on another person, like maybe don't do that here. You yeah, know, maybe get a pet rock. Yell yeah. at the pet rock. <laughs> get a pet rock and take it you know, out on that. <laughs> when you're crying at work, that's usually things that you've internalized coming to the surface about yourself. Yeah. Not like blaming another person for them. But when you're being angry at somebody, that's not taking any responsibility at all. I don't know. I'm I'm probably looking a little too much into this, but it's like no. We, we have to, especially in a workplace setting, like, I don't know, it's like, it's sharing the responsibility of stuff and, and maybe that's taking it too far. Like, obviously there are times where it's like, yeah, you should be angry, but well, it's a way to deal with it. Absolutely. I think that's not just the workplace. It's literally any situation, right? Like you can have emotions, yeah. but it's, it's you do kind of cross the line when you start hurting other people. Um, and actually, as you were saying that, I realized that there have been times where I've cried at work because I'm angry, but that's just yeah. how I, uh, <laughs> that's kind of what I do for any emotion. <laughs> so um, I guess like maybe a, a difference would be like, taking it out on someone in terms of like saying things that maybe aren't true or calling someone a name is just horrible. Like that's just not appropriate ever, especially in a workplace. I feel like, yeah, I'm like basic yeah. manners. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I was thinking about what you were saying about like crying in front of another person at work mm -hmm. and I've definitely done it like once or twice, probably, I mean, probably more than that, that I'm just trying to forget. But I remember <laughs> one of the times I did it, um, I, I've worked with some of the same people for a really long time now, just like at different places, like the industry is pretty small. And um, so I'm like friendly with them and, and have relationships with them outside of work. Yeah. Um, and one time I had just like gone out to drinks with one of my bosses and then like a friend of ours that we had used to work with. Mm -hmm. And it was so had just been saying he was like it makes me uncomfortable when people cry in front of me I don't like it it's not good but I had been working on way too many things my plate was way way too full 
like could not possibly push anything off it. I was working weekends. I was, I was working really late hours, like all the time. Um, and I, it, like we had like our one-on-one and I just like broke down crying and I was like, I need time off. And I'm so sorry because you just said 12 hours ago, <laughs> this makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> and now I'm doing it at a work setting. <laughs> But I have to do it. And like, sometimes it's, yeah, like, like what you were saying, nothing is going to change if you don't say anything. And sometimes the way that you have to say it is through crying. Yeah, definitely. The first time I ever asked for a big raise, I cried. Um, and I still, (laughs) oh, you never asked for a raise? (laughs) Not really. No, I've asked and they've been like, I don't think so, but well, um, we'll cover that on another episode because I think you should always be asking. For- no, I that is advice I give out so much, but I it's very hypocritical because I have such a hard time asking for more, but always ask for more. Always. They're big companies. They have I'm, tons of money. I'm more about negotiating when it's like, you know, anniversaries or whatever. Anyway, this is a different. Subject. Oh, no, that's so smart. That's asking for a raise, sort of. Yeah. You're like, happy anniversary. I love you. Give me money. Yeah. What's your gift? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, crying during asking for a raise was, again, very tied to my self-worth because I didn't believe that I was worth anything. I completely thought... And this was a combination of me and just the, not the actual job setting, but like the setting of the entire internet where everything's moving really quickly and like one minute you're popular and then the next minute you're not, or like, you know, what's going viral right now, things that were just, you know, a big deal at the time. Um, Yeah. And I had no, I, yeah. Wow. I have a lump in my throat thinking about it because I feel really sorry for that person. I'm like, oh, you're okay. Of course you should. Um, I did get the raise, (laughs) but, um, but I, I could tell that, or I guess if someone had come to me in that situation and cried asking for a raise, I think I would have like stopped and maybe either had someone from HR or like a therapist I don't know if there are any offices that just have a therapist around but like talked out what the actual problem was instead of just being like yeah 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 like please stop we'll get your raise like don't you know what I, mean? you know I do remember that she the person that I was talking to I mean this makes complete sense but definitely waited for me to calm down before being like ushering me out because it does look a certain way. And that's, that is a weird thing I struggle with, with the crying at work too. It's like, you don't want to look like you don't have your shit together because that's part, sometimes that's part of a job and I hate that and I'm not good at it, but it is a thing. So yeah, Yeah, that's, that's difficult to parse out and come to terms with. Like, it's okay to have these emotions, but I still want to look professional. Yeah. And then at that point, am I doing a disservice to the people I'm working with because I'm holding in my emotions and therefore I feel like I'm losing my identity and I'm blaming this company or this workplace, but really it's me. Oh my God. I really need to find a new therapist. (laughs) No. Oh, can I tell you about another research thingy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is from an article about like what to do if you have cried in front of your boss or colleagues. Okay. And um, the article said, research has found that employees who cite passion rather than emotion as the reason for tears are viewed as more competent and more likely to be chosen as collaborators on later projects. And you know what that makes me think of? Like, lying? <laughs> yes, it makes me think of lying. Absolutely. 
It makes me think of like the instinct when you're in a job interview and they're like, so what are like some of your weaknesses? And your instinct is to be like, that I care too much. (laughs) I'm a perfectionist. (laughs) I will work too late because I just want everything to get done, which are too many goals. (laughs) I will my to-do list will always get a it will all be crossed off that is like my biggest weakness like I can't leave without my to-do list being done (laughs) but those are things that are like a problem (laughs) why do people ask that I don't know I think there are so many other questions that are way more illuminating but yeah like you cry at work because of passion (laughs) Also, the word passion is so funny to me because to me, that's like, (laughs) you're crying because it's just like too steamy. (laughs) I'm so passionate. (laughs) That or the passion of the Christ, which is, I mean, I guess that would make me cry too, but it's nothing to do with work. I'm crying because of Mel Gibson. That is legit. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I guess like, have you ever had someone like cry at work in front of you and yeah. had it be passion rather than emotion? Like, has that even crossed your mind? No. Yeah. Like, what do you feel like people have cried in front of you the most about? Like, they feel like they can't keep up. They feel like they're making mistakes. They're overwhelmed. Uh, we get a lot of crying around the holiday season because it's really busy. <sighs> and everything done. And the holidays just in general kind of heighten emotions anyway. So that is so real, actually. It like it definitely changes the threshold. Like I feel like around the holidays, or if you're having personal problems like outside of work, like you're already at like a nine, and then the littlest thing can push you to a 10. And you know, so there's an iceberg there, and you're just seeing like the tip of the iceberg. I made that up. That's the metaphor I made up. Tip of the iceberg. Um, feel free to use it. Just make sure you credit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make an Instagram graphic. Ooh, <laughs> people aren't ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to make it. <laughs> okay, good, good. We'll keep that in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone listening to this, this is a secret. This is a little secret just between you, me, and stuff. Just that I tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I'm excited for that to be the show description. Christina makes up a cool new phrase that no one's ever heard of. That's false advertising. <laughs> what are they going to do? Sue us? Please Not don't. real? Please don't. No, the Please law, don't. the the law is fake. <laughs> Cry about it to your mom or to your boss, especially if you're a lawyer. I can't imagine if somebody was crying at work because they listened to this episode thinking they were going to get an original thought. <laughs> they're like listening in their cubicle and they're like they really need an original thought and phrase and they're like I usually go to Christina for that anyway she's kind of delicious I'm so sorry to disappoint you all oh my god I'm crying at work I mean I'm really glad this is my job now. <laughs> oh my god. Well, folks, there you have it. Christina and stuff cry at work. Now let's take a survey. How many people thought this was appropriate? <laughs> How many people feel like we cried out of passion rather than emotion? I'll wait. <laughs> how, how many people had to express anger because of this? how many people had to express themselves through crying (laughs) oh my gosh I forgot I actually just got a new tissue box wait this is so exciting I got a tissue Ah! 
it matches to... my bookcase. Oh my gosh, what a good occasion to break it out. I feel like I never buy myself tissues because I just like use my sleeves to cry into yeah. it. Now I'm fancy. Yeah. Like, that's what my fingers are for. Just... Exactly. Nature's tissues. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tissue box somewhere because Margaret brought it over during my breakup. Margaret's my best friend and um, I haven't used it since because I was like, I'm using these because you brought them. But you I know, use these. <laughs> forget my metaphor. That is a metaphor of growth and power. No, no, I still cried. I just was like, I'm going to use these hands just like God intended. My God, anyway, I don't know. I love her. <laughs> but I didn't really use them when she was around because I was like, you're right, these are better. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. I still have something else to tell you from this very exciting document about crying at work. You've distracted me with your <laughs> with your fingies. I cut that a lot. <laughs> of course you do. Oh my gosh. Oh, get those out of here. We can't be spirit, spirit fingers. <laughs> oh my God. I have to move. Okay. I have to move on to this. We're getting into gender. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Um, this is from Forbes, which is a real publication. So they they have to do fact checking and stuff. Forbes said, fact, women are biologically hardwired to cry more frequently than men. They have six times the amount of prolactin, which is a hormone related to crying. So it's, oh, than men. They have six times more prolactin than men. So it's no surprise that women sometimes feel tears come to their eyes during inopportune moments. In fact, research shows that 41% of women have cried at work at some point during their careers. First of all, how do I get that research job? That sounds fun. It's what I'm doing right now. And two, what? (laughs) (laughs) Why us? What? I, that... Okay, so there's like some biological facting in there, I guess. There's science, there's a hormone, but this actually makes me so worried for like, if I, a very emotional person who used to cry at school and used to cry at church and used to cry at family gatherings and has cried so in public so many times, if I still feel like I can't cry at work, then how much harder would it be to be uh like male identifying and feel comfortable expressing your expressing your emotions what you think what you think what you hear no i mean it's a very real struggle and um i you know i struggle enough not wanting to cry in front of other people I, i can't imagine what it's like for for it to be somebody who's it's far less socially acceptable to do and like to even get to the point where you're comfortable processing those feelings Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of male identifying people don't feel like they can get to a point where they can even process them um let alone show them yeah so we have a lot of work to do what do you think after this conversation after this extremely illuminating just scientific incredible nobel peace prize nominated conversation that we've had today but what's more false advertising that they're gonna cry about i just i I'm just i just want to say that <laughs> it's an honor just to be nominated stuff i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um if like what do you think would be like one solution to feeling bad about crying at work Oh goodness, that is a toughie, but I'm sure we can find one. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think just at the end of the day, nobody chose to work. 
nobody chose to like, I mean, unless you were like born into an obscene amount of money and just decided that you needed to have a career, which I'm sure to both of us, that's our realities. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, nobody, nobody decided that they were just like, I'm gonna work today and I'm gonna just like deal with all these really difficult things because I want to. You're a human being, you're a person. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel like you're not enough in certain moments. It's okay to, you know, experience that. And like, if it's processing time, it's processing time. And if you got to let that out, that's really okay. It doesn't make you a bad employee and it doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you a person. Um, and nobody, nobody asked for this. I don't want a career. I want my career. I love my career. But like, I don't, if I, if I had to choose between like crying at home and like crying at work, I would choose neither. I don't want to cry, but I would do it at home. You know, yeah. if I had to choose between the two, like I would do it on a yacht. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> top, top choice would be crying on a yacht. Like yeah. it'd be like, like yacht home work way down here yeah yeah definitely like, one of the last choices yeah you know nobody mm -hmm. wants to to be crying in their office bathroom but it happens yeah that's okay yeah like you didn't you didn't choose to be really good at spreadsheets but here you are you're really good yeah. at them and sometimes that's hard yeah that that's a really good point I haven't really thought about that that if oh wow if I start taking apart capitalism right now my brain will <laughs> fall out of my eyeballs but I did a bad job so you probably should <laughs> no no I think so much of what you said really like like lit up parts of my brain because of how true it is like yeah we're all just doing like the thing we should have compassion for each other yes so and ourselves, and ourselves apparently <sighs> stop you were saying i have compassion for myself jeez oh it. my god what do you think do you think it would be um cool and good for offices to have a designated crying room yeah yeah, I could also see that as like being kind of stigmatized to go into it, but I think that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone would know. Yeah, I think it's more just like fostering the environment where you can express your emotions freely and like know that you'll be heard out. Mm -hmm. That you have colleagues that can recognize that you're a person and care about you on a personal level. Mm. And like, your your colleagues can't always be your friends and things like that like I'm, I'm not I'm not expecting that but like you know somebody's going through a tough time it's okay to recognize that and be like hey I got you go go take care of it yeah yeah absolutely level because even if it's a situation where you can't like literally take on their work or take or their shift or something like that even just acknowledging that it really is okay that they are having that emotion and that they're expressing it can help so much. It helps so yeah. much. And it might actually shorten the time that they need to be sad because they'll just feel more accepted because sometimes yeah. I'll cry about crying, which is just so, it's like being anxious about being anxious. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, no, it's just, it's, the worst domino effect yeah of yeah okay so we're thinking just be more accepting be more compassionate mm, maybe bring the cubicles back yeah that's actually <laughs> a good solution honestly <laughs> we, we we didn't really say that enough and more and as clearly as we should have so I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> okay good um so yeah thank you so much for coming to our ted talk on crying at work 
Um, we're really excited to hear from you on Instagram. So make sure to go follow that at Sobcast the Podcast. And I definitely want to hear about stories where maybe you experienced someone who did a really good job interacting with someone who was crying or if somebody treated you really nicely like let's learn from other people who are better than me um and also if you're watching this on youtube because these episodes go on youtube uh leave those comments yeah there you don't have to go to instagram wait wait how does this sound like subscribe and leave a comment down below Thank you. I practice it in front of the mirror. Ooh, lucky mirror. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> for sure. That's really good. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast. Follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.